This is your pre-lab video for our next lab, which is the determination of the molar mass of an unknown diprotic acid. So this is our purpose. We're determining the molar mass of an unknown acid. Well, what's diprotic? Remember that di is, is two, two protons can be donated by this acid, diprotic acid. We're using acid-based titrations in this lab and uh, the general setup here is shown and we'll go through this in a minute. But what's titration of an acid and a base? Well, an, a known quantity of one, either an acid or a base, is used to find an unknown quantity of the other. And we're capitalizing on this neutralization reaction here with acids and bases. And our indicator, which is something that we put in the flask in the bottom, is something that will change color between an acid and a base. And phenolphthalein gives us our our correct color change at the right pH. And what we're looking for is neutralization. So we have an acid mixed with a base, we make a water and salt. And what's key for this is that when you have the acid in solution and you add the base to it, when your hydrogen ion concentration equals your hydroxide ion concentration, then your solution is now neutral. Um, and that's really important. So if we know the moles of one, we know the moles of the other when we reach neutrality, okay? So when our pH is, is seven, then our hydrogen ion concentration was equal to our hydroxide ion concentration. And that is really key to the, the whole lab. One or both of these reactants are in solution. And we use something called a burette here, which is up here, to put that solution in. And in this lab, we're gonna be put, putting our base in the burette and our acid in the flask. The reason we use a burette is to measure very precisely how much volume is dispensed and added to the reaction. So if you know where your, your volume started out and where your volume ends, you can read the graduations on the burette quite precisely, and it's to two decimal places, um, and you'll know how much volume of base you added, and that's important in our calculations. Okay, this picture, this little cartoon here, shows us the color change of phenolphthalein. We're starting with a clear solution. Phenolphthalein is clear in acid. Our acid is in here, and we're using a solid, a solid acid to standardize our NaOH. And I'll talk about what standardization is in a second, but we use oxalic acid in the bottom. We add water to it and swirl, okay? And we dissolve as much as we can. If it doesn't all dissolve, it's okay. As the neutralization uh, reaction proceeds, that oxalic acid will continue to dissolve. So our base is in our burette and we add our base to our acid. And eventually you'll start to see a little color change in here. So as you add it, we have this little area of concentration of base that turns pink. Phenolphthalein is pink in basic solution. So you start to see that, but as you swirl, it'll disappear. You'll add a little more, you'll see the color change, you'll swirl, it'll disappear. As you get this, this pink starts to grow and it takes a little longer to disappear, you wanna be adding your base very slowly because eventually one drop will give you a pink that doesn't disappear. And you want this pale, pale pink as your endpoint. And then you stop and you read your burette and you know how much base you added. If you added an extra drop, you went too far. Okay, so as soon as you get to this darker pink color, not this nice pale pink, you went too far and you'll have to start over because now if you read your burette, that volume will give you a, a number that's, that was too much. So you don't wanna to go too far. This is a picture to show you what it looks like, not in a cartoon, okay? So here's our, our end point. Put a piece of white paper underneath your flask to see the, the end point a little better because you might think it's clear uh, when it really is just that nice pale pink. How to read the burette. You are going to want to read your burette to only one decimal place because that's what the graduations are showing you. So you can see here our graduations on our burette, but you need to estimate between the graduations to get the last decimal place. So what do I mean here? Let's look on the, the picture on the right here. The burette is set up to measure as you dispense. So the numbers are, are lower on the top. Okay, so we start out with zero on the top, goes down one, two, three, goes all the way to 50 on our BRS. So if I'm looking at this one on the bottom, you want to read the bottom of the meniscus. So this number is 26, 
So there's 10 graduations here. So it's 26 milliliters, 26 point, let's see, five, six, seven. I know that it's, it's 26.7, but I can also estimate between the 0.7 and the 0.8. You can see where, if you get your eye at, at the level of the meniscus, and it's not that, that, that easy to, to see. You might want to put a dark thing behind, a, a light piece of paper behind the burette. Um, maybe even just your finger might give you the contrast to be able to see. Um, play with different things behind the burette so that you can see the best. It depends on the light that you're in. So I can estimate this last digit. It's pretty close to the middle. So I would say 26.7546, any of those would be close. So basically you're looking to see if it is it closer to the, the top or the bottom or in the middle and then just make your best guess. So here's an actual picture here on the left. So this is zero point. It looks like it's, to me, it looks like it's below the point one, but not very much. So maybe I would call this zero point one one. But it's important to go to two decimal places. When you fill your burette, please do not try to make an exact number. So I shouldn't see anyone with eyedroppers trying to, to make the meniscus be exactly on a line. So when you estimate, it's really quite bad form to have both your decimal places be zero, zero. So don't do that. Pour it, fill it, fill your burette so that you're within the graduations and read your initial burette reading wherever it is. Don't try to make it an exact number. Just estimate the last one. So we're working with molarity here. So the standardization of the NaOH solution is the first step of this lab. You'll be making up your NaOH solution, but you're going to be using like just approximate values and approximate measurements so that you have a certain molarity. That solution is going to stay constant. We're going to use that NaOH for the whole rest of the lab, but we are going to at first figure out exactly what that concentration of the NaOH is. And we're going to use titration of a known acid, oxalic acid, to determine what that exact concentration is. So that's the first half of the lab. This is the reaction that we'll be using. So our oxalic acid is a dihydrate. We're going to neutralize that acid with our NaOH that we, we've just made, okay? This is the concentration that we wanna know. We wanna know the molarity of the NaOH. That's the purpose of of the first part. So molarity, remember, is moles per liter. This is our reaction. Okay, so we're making a neutral. Two of these waters actually came from here. Okay, so we're, we're taking two of the hydrogen diprotic acids, okay, from the oxalic acid with two NaOH, okay, two hydroxide ions, making two waters plus the two that we already had. So the key to, to this is, is recognizing that we need two moles of, of hydroxide ion to neutralize one mole of our diprotic acid. Our calculations then, okay, so how does this give us our quantities that we need? We measure out the grams of acid that we start out with, okay, that's just a measurement that you made on your balance. It was a solid and we put it into our, our flask and added our water. We can convert our grams of acid into moles of acid using our gram formula mass of oxalic acid. So from this in our periodic table, we can figure out the grams per mole. We can change grams of acid into moles of acid. Since we have a balanced equation, we can once we have moles of one thing, we can convert it to moles of another using stoichiometry. So our mole-mole ratio here is a two to one ratio, we can change moles of acid into moles of base. Moles of base is part of molarity. We need the moles of base. We just calculated it. So all we need is then our liters of base to calculate our molarity. Our liters of base came from our burette and we measured that experimentally. We have a final burette reading and an initial burette reading. If you subtract those, that will give you an, a volume in milliliters, convert that into liters, and divide. 
Okay, so we were looking for our moles of base from our titration. From our titration numbers uh, from our burette, we have liters and we calculate our molarity. That's the purpose of part A or the first part of this, this lab. The second part is the titration of an unknown acid with our now known base. We just calculated the molarity of our base. That's now our known quantity. Our unknown quantity is a sample of a solid acid that you'll get from your instructor. So you're gonna use the exact same titration procedure. You can leave your base in the burette the whole time. Don't empty your burette in between every trial. Okay, you don't wanna waste it because we just figured out what the concentration of that base was. If we run out, then we'd have to start all over again, make a new base and then standardize it, find out what that concentration is to then use for our second part. So don't waste it, leave it right in the burette because our base will continue to, to stay in the burette for all of our titrations. This is the general equation for a diprotic acid, which we're telling you that your unknown acid is diprotic. Okay, so you will need two moles of base to neutralize your diprotic acid. So this is just in general what the acid is. So some, we have some unknown anion here. So how are we going to calculate it? Okay, we have, a, if, if you titrate this to your endpoint, you know that your moles of acid, your moles of hydrogen ion rather, equal the moles of your hydroxide ion. And we have from our burette, a volume of base that was dispensed. So we have a volume of base, we can change that into liters. Liters times molarity times moles per liter give us, gives us moles of our base that we needed to neutralize our acid. So with stoichiometry, once we have moles of one thing, we can calculate moles of another with our balanced equation, our two to one mole-mole ratio. So liters from burette times our molarity. Our molarity came from part A. You just calculated that with your standardization of NaOH. That goes here. This times this gives us moles of base. Once we have our moles of base, we can use stoichiometry, our one to two ratio, to calculate our moles of our unknown acid. The purpose of this whole lab was to figure out the molar mass of our acid. And a molar mass is grams per mole. Looks like we just figured out one half of that, that piece. So now we have our moles of our unknown acid. We need grams of our unknown acid. Our grams came from our initial mass of acid that we, we weighed out at the beginning of this titration. So you have grams experimentally just from the balance. You just calculated the moles of unknown acid that were in there. You just divide them and you get your molar mass, grams per mole. You need to perform at least two trials for both your standardization and your unknown acid. Three points are assigned for accuracy in this lab. Right? Three points on the line. You, you wanna be very careful with measuring your masses. You wanna be very careful in measuring and reading your burettes. Okay, that's where the two decimal places come in, very important. And if you can do more than two trials of each, do more than two trials because you will reduce your, your error with additional trials. And I say if you can, because if you, if you go past the endpoint a few different times, you may get short on your NaOH. So if you have enough NaOH and you should have more than enough time to do at least two to three trials of, of each part A and or, you know, first part and the second part. If you can do more than, than two, then you have more confidence. You may have one trial that's quite different than the other two. You can conclude based on an average of the two that agree. So hazards, we're working with acids and bases here. So you have to do your normal procedures, goggles. If you get it on your skin, make sure you rinse them completely, lots of water, and, and do it quickly. All your solutions can be uh, rinsed down the drain, followed by lots of water. So go ahead and turn on that tap and feel free to, to rinse those down the drain. And that concludes our video for the next lab.